Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the shed. I am Lonnie. Hey, good morning. I'm Candace. Welcome back. It's Tuesday morning. Um, we have, I think, six orders going out. Yeah, it was a slow sales day. We had a great sales weekend. And then yesterday, um, we had some sales and a few spurts, and then that was it. So yeah. that's just the way eBay's been for us lately. It'll be, we'll have a sales day. We'll have like two, we'll do like 250 and then a thousand and then 400 and then 800 and then 180 it's just yeah that's just the way it is like it's been a great month mm -hmm. but yesterday was just not that that great so what'd you think of dinner last night what i think of dinner last night did you like it yeah, it was great y'all i tried to grill wookie meat it was okay it was just a little chewy <laughs> oh i didn't know you were setting up <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? It was leftovers, and I chose to have a corn glizzy instead because I ate the leftovers for lunch yesterday. That actually came, I got that a while back from a viewer in heaven. That's <laughs> from uh, Wol Wolfster1234. I didn't even see it coming. <laughs> like, I was like, I walked right into it. I was like, I knew you were going to do a joke, but I didn't know you were doing it right there. I didn't know you were setting it up. Take advantage of his caffeine, not hitting him good yet. That's That's pretty good. We do have something we want to talk about this morning. Um, we had a question from Brandon Vizina7884. When you use Pirate Ship for International, does it print customs forms or is it not needed? So we kind of just wanted to briefly talk about Pirate Ship and um, that we do use it sometimes instead of eBay International Standard. Yep. And um, you can see here, these are the, the rates that is charged for... Um, those packages um you have canada on the left and then the rest of the world over here yep and um it's up to four pounds okay this is through pirate ship okay this is their simple export rate program it's up to four pounds it could be the value could be up to four hundred dollars in these dimensions and then 30 and then length length plus height plus width 36 inches max length 22 inches some of that is from um obviously from postal guidelines because the 22 inch max length in uh particular that's the that's where they start doing the, the surcharge. surcharge yeah so that mm -hmm. it's a mix of pirate ship uh and usps sort of and these rates y'all can see here like canada half pound of canada is 949 that may be cheaper than Canadians can ship a half pound within Canada. Yeah. <laughs> based on what I've heard. Right. Canadian shipping is super expensive. So we have done a good bit of shipping to Canada with this. Um, so a few things to mention. Number one, of course, you have to use your own packaging when you do this. So you have to use your own box. You're, there's no like uh, free priority boxes or anything like that to use. Right. Um, another thing to mention is that it does not include insurance that's correct it has tracking but not insurance mm -hmm. so keep that in mind you can't of course purchase insurance but you want to build that into your price or whatever for your right you your shipping you're charging separately. you can purchase it yeah. uh we did have a few problems with um with packages not making it at all during the big c right a couple of years ago so we really we're taking months to get there right so we really scale back yeah that wasn't necessarily pirate ships fault or anybody else's fault that's just the way things were for a right. while right a uh, lot probably lots of problems in customs too yeah at that point um so we really scale back on our international shipping and we're starting to ramp it up a little more again but uh yeah, yeah. we used to we used to sell be able to sell a lot internationally and um Unfortunately, we just had to scale it back, but now we're trying to pick it back, you know, get back going. And here, another another caveat for the um, simple export rate, buyers that are used to buying like on eBay through, well, it's GSP or the new one. What is it called? eBay Standard International. No, that one, that's not the one. It's eBay International or something oh, yeah. like that. But it's, it's whichever one replaced. You have, to, you have to opt all in for. Right. Yeah. But that and and those kind of programs the buyer is actually paying their um their vat if they owe vat 
in that country mm -hmm. or customs fees or whatever whatever taxes there are in that country they're paying those up front so one thing to be sure of is to make sure the expectation of your customer is that there if there is a vat or anything like that this does not deal with that at all like yeah, they, they have to pay it on their end they will be responsible for it yes right so that is a, a big difference too yeah so if you get a customer saying hey i didn't know i was going to pay this well they're probably lying if they live in a country where vat is paid then they know they have to pay that yeah so <laughs> but that's just something to look out for yeah. um it depends on where the package is going as to the customs form you will have to fill out customs information depending on which country you might have to put in that code mm -hmm. thing if y'all know what i'm talking about let me let me pull it up okay so whenever you go to uh do simple export rate on uh pirate ship then this is the customs stuff you'll always have to fill out what's your shipping quantity the value uh, in US dollars the weight of the item which is not going to be the same as a package weight it's going to be some amount less than the overall package weight you know whatever the actual item itself weighs and then the harmonization number uh, it does say required for certain countries uh, like in our instance Canada is not one of them where we have to fill this out sometimes we do I think usually to Europe we have to do that but I'm not sure uh, so you have to fill all this stuff out and then depending on where it's going uh the label will either look like this which is a um uh, pretty much a basic uh usps uh what do you call that candace usps uh usps first class international mm -hmm. label that's what that is that's just like the one you would buy if you were buying your postage directly from the post office and it goes directly to right the part the person it goes the it ships directly to your buyer yeah uh, now the other now use most of the ones we are all the ones we do to canada look like this yeah uh the ones that we do to europe usually look like this um uh, where it generates a priority mail label for you very similar to the gsp program for ebay um and then it goes to the pirate ship export sorting center in elk grove village illinois and then it gets repackaged, bundled, whatever the heck they do with it there. Yeah. Yep. So depending on where you're going, you're going to get different labels. And if you notice, this question was about the um, customs. The custom stuff. This has the customs form built into it. I imagine when they reprint their label here, it probably mm -hmm. generates it on the new label. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they have the information, so they'll just right. generate it. Maybe it'll be some kind of uh, little thing they slip on the side of it or right. something or yeah. in a pouch. Yep. I don't know how that works. I've never seen the distant end of this to, to know exactly what it is. But, that, but yeah, this has zero customs information, but they have it saved on their system. Yeah. And then this has the customs inf information actually printed. And the cool thing is it does print your signature for you and the date. So you don't even have to sign them yeah so yeah that's how those work those are old these are packages that have already been delivered yeah so we, we do use it occasionally so good question mm -hmm. uh the other thing to note about simple simple export rate is once you are signed up with pirate ship this is not sponsored by the way i've actually reached out to him before uh hey you want to sponsor the channel <laughs> because like I use them so much, especially yeah. a couple of years ago. I was using them a ton. And uh, they're like, nah, we're good, which I understand because, I mean, they don't really need to advertise because we give them free advertisement anyway, Yeah. along with a lot of other people because it's a good service. But to get access to Simple Export Rate, you just chat them from your account. You say, hey, I, I, I need Simple Export Rate, and they'll turn it on for you. Okay. so they'll usually say something like all right matey how can i help you or whatever but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they usually do some kind of pirate talk yeah <laughs> you, it's you, funny. can you imagine the first day of work there your orientation where they teach you how to talk like a pirate pirate lingo <laughs> <laughs> all right let's pull our few little orders candace all right the first one is a big uh beer poster oh goodness where is that uh, i think it's up on top it might of be this yeah 
It's a, uh, it's a really wide one. When I say big, it's like really wide. Yeah, super long. It's like six feet long. Yeah. Is this just one poster here? No, this is multiple. We should have one left. Okay, so that that was the uh, quantity listing there? Yeah. Okay, I got one out. Uh, uh, it's uh, 54 inches long. Isn't that crazy? You should have seen me trying to take pictures of that thing. I remember that. You had it stretched all across the floor. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. That sold for $30. That's the second one of those we've sold, I think. Yes. And we have, uh, like you said, we have one left. One left. Yep. Right, cool. Alright, we sold two baseball masks. I want to say hockey masks again for some reason. Two baseball? Yeah, F and A. Okay. Yeah, wait, what'd you say? F A. F and A? Fa? Or F? Uh, uh, All right. Those are some Shen guards or whatever. F and ah, here we go. Ah. F and A. So I think we've sold like, uh, I think four. Yeah, no, we, we, we sold four of these things now. So, you know, not, not crazy, crazy money, but. F sold for 12 and A sold for 15. Good. All right. Italiana. <laughs> All right. Two of them. Two Italianas. All right. How many Italianas we got in stock right now, Candace? Is that a good number? I guess we move it up to like four. Yeah, put it at four. Yeah. That's a good idea. I think we, how many have we sold now? Can you click on the listing and tell? Mm -hmm. I'll do a quick QA on these, although they look good. 26. So we've sold 26 of these guys now. That's awesome. Yeah. And people that have gotten them seem to be happy with them too. So, yeah, that's a nice order there. Yeah, forty dollars each. All right, and then we have on five Bravo some clay poker chips with an oak wood case. Yes. About time these sold. Somebody, I, I think somebody is going to be whoever bought these is going to be happy with them hey we have a calculator right here what is this oh that's a that must be a parts only maybe or is that a working cal if that's a work you know what that is a working calculator i think you asked me about how i do the graphing functions whenever i list them let yeah. me see if that's working and then i'll show i'll yeah. show how exactly how i do it do a little demo yeah because i think it helps Apparently it's not helping sell that one though. <laughs> yeah, look, this is a really nice clay it's a set nice here. Set, yeah. These aren't the the modern kind. These are the uh you know, it's 25 a stack. And look, these really cool wood racks that they're in. I know, it's a nice set. It's man. it's great. I should have kept it. Oh, yeah. I didn't think for that kind of money, I should have kept it. Yeah, it's all for 45 I think we paid like 5 for it or something. Yeah. I think it was 5 Yeah, that was a great set there. All right, this this makes me a little nervous. This isn't a <laughs> this isn't an area I like to delve into too often. Although I think Candace did good on this one. Yeah. Um, sometimes you just have to go with your gut, you know. Sometimes you can just tell when the situation's not right. These Tiffany sunglasses... I did read a little information on how to tell if your stuff is authentic, like just details, like um, the fact that the case, like this is like embossed instead of just printed on where it says Tiffany and Company. And that even on the inside, you know, it's embossed inside there also. Mm -hmm. Just little details like that. Now to identify these, um, there are numbers inside the arm of sunglasses. And I just Googled that. And it brought me to Sunglass Hut um, where I could get the style name and everything. It even has like, it has the specs and everything for me, you know, but. Um, was, that an, was that an intentional uh, play on words there? The specs? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it also, I mean, it gives me information like what to put like for the, the, the violet, violet gradient lens, which 
you can't really tell to, if you hold it up to white you can see it does have like a violet tint i'm sure y'all can't pick that up yeah we believe we believe you but i i was even able to zoom in on their lens and my numbers match exactly and the every, printing looks the same everything, everything every number every symbol everything is exact so um everything you've seen about these sunglasses points to them being legit yes another thing is companies always like either etch or put their name on the lens i don't know if y'all can see it and if you scratch at it if it's fake it'll come off i'm not gonna we're do not that. gonna scratch no. at the lens i will say i did have some knockoffs tiffany sunglasses one time and that wore off like within a couple of times of wearing it another thing too is you can just feel whether the item feel like when you pick it up if it feels does it feel like quality or not yeah you know yeah. like that like it's hard to put in it's hard to quantify that but just some sometimes you pick items up and they're like this is well made or this yeah. is not and well I made i mean the fact that we have everything the box I, i've the had paper. i've had fake chinese stuff before though that did have all the boxes right and stuff. so then you need to look at the details all the colors for tiffany are going to be this exact blue color it's all going to match you right. know and and the paperwork is is good to have too it looks yes. like we have all of it and tiffany always puts their name somehow right here on this part of the lens sometimes it's metal like the whole thing is metal but they're going to always have their name right here at the temple that would always be faked too yeah so yeah yeah i i agree with you though i I'm like 99% that those are legit. Yeah. I feel really good about those. Yeah, I do too. But yeah, those it's always risky though dealing with like any kind of luxury brand at all. There is like maybe a batch number or something here. I guess if I really wanted to make sure I could reach out to the company and... I I don't... Can't, I, I, I feel really good about these. Oh, I do too. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out my price now. So if they are a fake, they're a very, very good fake for what I would call a lower end on the scale of luxury items. Yeah, we're not you know talking I mean? $1,000 glasses. Right. Here. Yeah. Like, they went into great, great detail. Mm -hmm. It's I don't think that happened. Yeah. Are Tiffany sunglasses even, like, that huge of a thing? I, I, I don't know. I have no I mean, idea. They even, you can even get them at, uh, Lens Crafters sells them for, I, I, you know, for prescriptions. So. Fun, fun fact, one of the few jobs that I ever actually went for and didn't get... Was it Tiffany and Company? No. <laughs> it was a, no. It was a sunglass hut. Oh, yeah. I went and applied for a job at Sunglass Hut in one of those kiosks in the mall. I even I went and did the interview and everything, and I guess they didn't like the cut of my jib. Maybe that you wear eyeglasses. Oh, uh, that's true. You can't model their sunglasses. You know what? I was wearing contacts at the time. Oh. I don't think I was like... You didn't have the surfer look? I was... Fr you know what it was? I, I was back from air force technical school tech school and all that i just come back from keesler and i was about to start lsu and i just wanted a part-time job and i went there for it nope i went and had the interview never heard back <laughs> they always had like the oh they did the young fresh look like they just walked off the oh. beach people oh i knew i was screwed whenever i walked up to, <laughs> i went up there to meet the manager and they had all these like like young uh blondes working yeah. there i'm like okay uh yeah okay. i'm not getting this job <laughs> no let me go over to wiener schnitzel <laughs> 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 like, for you it was little caesar's huh let me go over to uh, go glizzy schnitzel <laughs> <laughs> Two Monster Highs going out. <laughs> what in the world? She did that right. She did actually did that move right before I hit go on the camera. And I was like, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> and she did it. She called my bluff. $14 each going out today. Yeah. One of those sold on eBay. The other sold on Macari. Yep. Oh, we need to relist it then. Yeah. Because Macari is... Yeah. Macari has some weird stuff about it. Like you cannot... You don't have multi-quantity listings right, on the Right, so we do one at a time, and when it sells, we have to relist it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. That's fine. Uh, something else about Macari. Last night, um, I did go in and um, cross-post the... Don't laugh at me. Stop. I don't know what I'm laughing at. 
Every oh. Yeah. <laughs> now you are. I didn't even think about it. I shouldn't even say anything. <laughs> but uh, I went in. I went in and uh, to list perfectly. And I cross posted the cookbooks. Okay, all the cookbooks. Yeah, it was thirty cookbooks, and I got all those over to Macari. Okay. And uh, one thing that even you grizzled uh, Macari veterans might not know yet, probably most of y'all do know, uh, is that Macari now has media mail. So I was able to offer shipping on all the cookbooks for five dollars media rate nice and you know it depends on how heavy it is of course but that i thought that was a big deal like it could be a very big deal for booksellers that have maybe looked at macari in the past said okay that's a no-go they don't have good shipping for books right because they don't right. but in before they have media rate they don't uh, actually i saw a comment the other day might have been yesterday where somebody was talking about how macari the weaknesses of Macari are the heavier shipping, which I agree. Larger items, the Macari shipping options are not good. Uh, but And they also mentioned that they didn't have media mail, but now they do. So uh, keep that in mind. That might be something for y'all to take a look at. Uh, we, and we are still not like, we have a few Macari sales coming in, and but we don't we still don't have a ton of stuff up. I'm still working on getting listings moved over. Yeah. So I'll probably do... 25 30 more today right uh, maybe tonight i might do it tonight when i get off Just of work gradually getting stuff over there yeah yeah i mean we are that's that's nine sales on macari now yeah it hadn't been a long long time so you know mm -hmm. it, you know you don't build it in a day that's all right there's nine sales we wouldn't have had probably so yeah. i've been working through some filter stuff got some film stuff i'm gonna look at here in a minute got some uh i already looked these up these are fairly low cost these xerox maintenance kit things but i'll see what i can do with that uh some of the stuff has been kind of decent like i just listed this for i think 28 bucks those are sealed inside of there listed a few other things what you working on some fancy little cocktail utensils yeah those are cool the yeah. bamboo yeah um some other listings said they're from like the 60s which that makes sense um so i cleaned them up and i i was gonna list them for 40. <laughs> and i was cleaning them and i broke one <laughs> yeah but I, th I think the reason you broke one is because it was already damaged yeah like see okay there's see no that. way there's no way it broke see how this one is kind of curved so i had i was trying to straighten one out and i barely put any pressure and it just like snapped it's got it's made of like cheap cast metal mm -hmm. covered in maybe real gold i don't know it's probably gold some kind of thin gold, gold plate, plate yeah they are very cool though yeah so um yeah i was gonna since i broke one i'm gonna listen for uh 35. <laughs> try anyway yeah huh? we paid 250 a box for those yeah so. um did have a question about um how i do the graph on the calculator not everybody is familiar with graphing calculators so i thought i would just show y'all real quick all you do you turn your calculator on you hit the y equals button and then a sign of x That'll give a nice little curve. You hit graph right here and it draws it. And then you can also maybe do something else in there like a uh, one over X. No, I'll do a two, I'll do a two X. We'll graph that and look, that'll give us a nice little line right up there, right up like that. And you know, that makes a nice little display, right? For your listing. So, um, another thing to know about these cal there's a lot to know about these calculators but another thing to know is like um second if you go second and then mem you can do a reset of the calculator right here which is useful sometimes uh, and do all memory and then reset memory reset okay memory cleared sometimes that's good like if there's a bunch of like uh settings the previous owner had changed or maybe the graph doesn't maybe it's zoomed out real far or something like that you do that and it just puts it back to uh factory default so i like to do that sometimes too so that might be helpful man we made a big mistake big mistake 
I think I, he's more upset than I am. Well, no, it is big because I've had... Okay, let me show y'all what happened. <laughs> so, we actually sold two... Oh, look. You say it. So, you know, we, we shipped out two this morning. And I said, oh, we have two left. We need to add more of the Italiana cookbook. There. Thank you. <laughs> so, um... We, I didn't think we would sell two during the day today, and we did. Out of stock. Before we re up the quantity. So. So now we had to relist with a new item number. So we, yeah, we had to relist. I don't think it. Am I wrong here? So y'all, y'all help me out. Is there any way for us to fix this? Like, is there any way for us to just make that listing live again? Yeah, because it's. With stock? I mean, I don't know what. I don't think we can. We have to cancel somebody's order. <laughs> But I don't think that'll make the listing live again, though. It probably should. But we wouldn't. I mean, we wouldn't do that. I'm joking. <laughs> but it, it sucks, though, because that... I know a lot of the watchers were viewers. We had, it had, like, a ton of watchers. I know. And it had a ton of views. And it had a ton of sales. It had 28 sold. Yeah. So eBay's thinking, okay, there's a hot property here. And they're probably giving us a nice little bump. Yeah. And now... It's it. We gotta start all over again. <laughs> Damn it! You know what happens whenever that that stock, whenever that stock would get low, eBay starts sending out alert, almost gone to the watchers, to or, the right? watchers yeah. or people, anybody probably that ever clicked on the page. Yeah, was almost out. Yeah, it probably sent. Oh, oh well. Damn it! That hurts. That hurts. There still is only one other listing up, so. The $75 one. The huh? same one whenever we first got them. They, yeah. they probably haven't even gone to see if anybody's put any up. But they're like us. Like you list something and then you move on with your life. You're like, yeah. how often do we go back and recomp? But not very often. Never. Well, I have. I do sometimes with a Monster High buy we did just to well, see if we need well, to reevaluate our prices. True, because we have quantity of that. Yeah, but usually we don't. And we have serious money into those 99.9% of the time, we don't. No, yeah. no. Okay, we're inserting a little clip here because Candace. Uh, I googled it just to see if we could kind of reactivate that sold out listing, and it's too late. But to prevent it from happening again, there is a feature. Um, you go to your seller account down to selling preferences, and I don't. In case you don't know, let me just show you real quick. You get to your selling account under account selling account settings. settings, and then go to selling preferences. Yep. And then under multi-quantity listings, listings stay active when you're out of stock. There's a toggle button you have to switch on. And then also, if you want the buyers to be able to see how many items are left, like exactly the number, you can toggle that on also. And that's personal preference. Yes. So, um, yeah. So if we would have had that set... It, then it wouldn't have ended. We could have gone in and put the qu a quantity back. It would have just said none available. Right. And then we could have edited that because since it was still active, we could have edited quantity. And kind of reactivated it. And then we would have kept all of our other data. data. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Okay. We know now. <laughs> now we know. Don't do what we did. Yeah. I've been listing uh like stuff. Exp yeah, just like <laughs> uh, lots of smalls like. Look, like this uh, Polaroid film, expired film. I, this is like the third little lot of, or third listing I'm doing with that. Yeah. Lists a bunch of water filters, just odds and ends. I lots just of, listed a couple of cookbooks. Yeah. Candace listed a, earlier today, Candace listed a $100 pair of sunglasses. Those Tiffany glasses yeah. I picked up. And then I listed like some defunct uh, voice over IP router thing that's probably not going to sell but i have to try you never know you don't know maybe like, somebody's making an 80s movie or whenever it was oh, <laughs> no about a, uh, an office job or something yeah. I, don't <laughs> I don't know i or I'm maybe sure the prop department can just build something somebody may actually need this thing yeah but there's like zero sales records of anything so yeah. my hundred dollar listing is probably not legit but it might be. It could. If it does sell, I'm gonna do. Uh, I don't know. Not. I'm mean, not gonna do, do a much. Jig? What'd you say? I don't. No, I didn't say anything. You start to say something. Start with J. I don't know what I'm gonna do. 
I'm, I'm probably not going to do whatever I was thinking. Everybody, okay. comment down below. If no. Tell us if you want Monty to do a jig. I'll probably jump up and I'll probably just do a fist pump, honestly. That's usually what I do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll go, yes, yes. <laughs> do you ever do that, Candace? No. You know, I do it all the time. You do. Like, like whenever I make a really big sale, like a really good sale, I'm like, yes. And like sometimes. You won a contest or something. Sometimes I might do a, like a triple. Like a. Yes. Mm, mm. <laughs> you, don't ever, <laughs> you don't ever fist pump a good sale. I celebrate sometimes. I don't ever fist pump anything. Really? Man, some some Have sales. Have you ever seen me fist pump? I think I'm more emotionally invested into this thing. I think you are. I think you look at it like you need. It's a game you need to win. It is. It's exactly how I look at it. No, I mean, not no. It's not. I mean, like a competitive type. That's I, that's how I look at it. Okay. Uh, if that's we, what you need to motivate you. It's great. No, that's how it is. Okay. Like I am more, I'm definitely competitive. You know, yeah. I do look at it like, like the money is nice, but I do look at it as like a win, whatever the heck that means. Yeah. Some some weird thing. I'm a winner. <laughs> I'm a winner. I'm good enough. <laughs> Anyways, that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks a bunch for watching, y'all, and we will see you again very soon. Bye.